This is an MR of the brain and face in a one month old with a asymmetric growth on the left side of the face, left cheek region. It was thought to be a mass, but if you look at it on this T2-weighted image, it's relatively homogeneously hyperintense. It's hyperintense on T1-weighted imaging, suppresses on fat-suppressed T1-weighted imaging, and there's no suspicious enhancement within it. So this looks at first like a lipoma, which is a benign entity. Obviously there may be cosmetic implications, but it's a benign entity. There was more to it than that. If I go back to the T2-weighted image, if I look at the cerebral hemispheres, the right cerebral hemisphere, it protrudes a little bit over to the left and midline. So if you actually measure it, the right cerebral hemisphere is a little bit larger than the left. The right cerebral hemisphere, look at the T2-weighted image of the white matter. It's a little bit more hypo-intense than the left. And additionally, it's a little bit more hyper-intense on T1-weighted imaging than the left cerebral hemisphere white matter. And it's noted that in a one-month-old, this T2 hyper-intense, T1 hypo-intense appearance of the white matter is normal. So while anytime you see an asymmetry, it's hard to know what's abnormal, the left hemisphere seems to have a normal myelination pattern. Now, if I go up more superiorly, I'm seeing irregular sulcation pattern. So this patient has what looks like polymicrogyria. And again, this hemisphere looks a tiny bit larger. And while there's a little bit more hypo-intense appearance on T2, and hyperintense appearance on T1-weighted imaging of the white matter, that can be seen with accelerated myelination. Well, accelerated myelination and asymmetrically enlarged hemisphere or portions of a hemisphere is a finding that can be seen with hemimegalencephaly. Now, hemimegalencephaly does not even have to involve the whole hemisphere. It can be subhemispheric hemimegalencephaly. And then this patient has polymicrogyria, which also can be associated with hemimegalencephaly. So let's take a look again at the cheek mass. So a biopsy of this showed that there was a mutation in the PIK3CA gene. What does that mean? Well, the PIK3CA gene is noted to be associated with a rare congenital overgrowth syndrome known as CLOVES syndrome, C-L-O-V-E-S. That is an acronym for you know, congenital lipomatous overgrowth. There's vascular malformations, epidermal nevi, and skeletal abnormalities. So this lipomatous overgrowth here of the cheek is actually related to Clove syndrome with this PIK3CA mutation. Now, we just went through that acronym, and I don't see anything necessarily about the brain malformation, except remember one of them is overgrowth. And you could say that there's overgrowth of the brain, but it's noted that the PIK3CA mutation is actually a different mutation in the PIK3CA gene is associated with hemimegalencephaly. So it's not unexpected that someone with Clove syndrome may have hemimegalencephaly, it just happens to be contralateral to the lipomatous overgrowth on the face. So this patient has a facial lipomatous overgrowth, right-sided hemimegalencephaly with polymicrogyria and accelerated myelination in the setting of Clove syndrome.